by the JDR Fundraiser, which stands for Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Um, we wanted to show you guys this video because we wanted to um, explain that if, like these people need a lot of support because they have so much to deal with. Things are moving a little slow today because of the computer problems, so it's taking a while for things to buffer. So our big question was, can you make a difference raising money for type 1 diabetes? And we thought that we raised it, um, made a difference raising as much as we did, uh, because every little bit counts. And it took, it took a lot of group work, but uh, so we have a video too. I wonder if um, without your support, a world without type one diabetes is only a dream, and it's impossible to think that life will get better for generations to come. Because we know progress is uncertain. It's why we refuse to believe the struggle will eventually fade away. We're leaving the constant counting, testing, and injecting is beyond our control. Because life-changing discoveries are not our destiny. But your donation can change our destiny. Because life-changing discoveries are not beyond our control. We're leaving the constant counting, testing, and injecting. The struggle will eventually fade away. It's why we refuse to believe progress is uncertain. Because we know, for generations to come, life will get better. And it's impossible to think that a world without type 1 diabetes is only a dream. Together, we can turn type one into type one. And then that's a quote we found of one person can make a difference and everyone should try it. And for some interesting facts, um, having type one diabetes uh, doesn't mean you can't have sugary foods. You actually can. You can, as long as your blood sugar is good, you can have that one sweet. Um, when you eat that one sweet, you have to inject insulin to your body because, like, your body doesn't produce it. So that's to regulate your sugar. Um, it's usually common in kids that get it. Uh, some adults may get it. Um, it's more genetic. Uh, it's not from obesity or lack of exercise. Um, for our project, we all had a connection to type 1 diabetes in some way, and that was really what helped us, like, kept us driven during the project. And my connection was with my uncle. Um, he's had diabetes since he was, since he was, like, a baby, actually. So he's had it all his life, and I've seen him deal with it, and it's, uh, it's really kind of consuming because it's a daily thing. Um, my brother has it. He was diagnosed at 13 months. Uh, the way he got diagnosed was my mom called into the ready care because she thought he had the flu. And once the nurse uh, heard his rapid breathing, 
then she uh, sent them to the ER right away. Uh, he was really dehydrated, so they couldn't find a vein to stick the needle in, so they had to stick it into his neck for the IV. <coughs> um, his sugar was over 600, which is not good at all. And at that point, the doctor didn't know if he was going to survive or not, so they wouldn't give my parents a straight answer. And then, um, so he was in the hospital for about a week before he could come. So. Um, I'm Gilbert Franco, and uh, I'm the one who brought the group together. I had the idea to have a carnival or something, and it was an action's idea to host a carnival for JDRF to try and um, make money for the donation. And um, that's what we did. We posted it here at the gym. All right, um, my connection was that I got really close to Ashley and I knew Nick, so I saw everything that he had to do. Okay, so, yeah, this is your part, sorry. Um, we got a video, um, and that's right now. And he has some values, and um, it just shows how like anyone can get it, and a lot of people have it. And um, there's also a girl that talks in here about how she didn't take care of herself when like getting diabetes treatment and whatnot, so she be blind. Oh, here she comes.
to make sure that it's regular, not going high or low. When it's low, I get shaky. Um, I sometimes feel dizzy. You get really weak feeling. You have to eat something and just sit down for a minute until you feel better. When it's high, you have to use the bathroom a lot. You have to drink water because you feel really dehydrated. And then if you do that, you should wait 20 minutes, check it again, see if it's normal. And then showing up the next day so that was a big challenge and then uh, we all helped out so that was a plus we all had different um, connections of getting things and how we're gonna get donations and we had a great turnout so that was good and um, we we are rolled at 800 and raised over a thousand so we were really proud and with the thousand dollars we raised uh, we got this banner from JDRF just oh to my thank gosh. you guys for their Wow, that's really cool. So, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. I have a question for Nick. When you talk about putting, you, you say you get up, you have to check, then you eat breakfast, and you have to check, you have to put your carbs in. I, what does that mean? Well, on the side of the label, if you look at like the side of a cereal box or something, there's a place that says carbohydrates. Right. And that's what to put in, and that's what the insulin gets measured off of for how much insulin I need for 
to put in my body. So you put that, like you enter that in, in your yeah, I have a little in your pump. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's what I wondered. Okay. I have a Thanks. question for you too. Do you have to manually test your blood sugar or does your pump do all that? No, I have to manu manually test it, but there's a sensor that they come out with so you can just stick it in and every six days change it, but it automatically tests it, so then you won't have to prick your finger as much. How old were you when you got that? I was 13 months. When you got the pump? Oh, when I got the pump, I was five, around that age. Any other questions? John, did you have a question? Do you, are your friends pretty pretty cool about it, or is yeah. it a hassle, or? Uh, no, usually it's just quick testing, put the carbs in, and then it's just done with the do again. You've seen in your time dealing with this, like you said, from five on up, there's been quite a few advancements in this process now, right? Yeah, there has. And that's, I assume, from all of this, from the, from the JDRF, and the donations that people have been giving? There's been approximately about $500 million donated around the world for this, so it's been a big help. But, um. I mean, you've seen a difference in the quality of your life in the last few years, right? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks a lot, you guys.